place. Bring us to the order. Fair enough. <laughs> Things out. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, okay, so. Do we get to do remote participation? Yeah, we can do the remote participation. We've got a couple board members who can vote Tony in. I don't know where Tony is on that island. It's remote. I think he's in um, Oregon on this. Oregon? Beach. On the Oregon yeah. Trail? It, well, no, no, on the beach. <laughs> is that rock for me? Yeah. Yeah, I, th I think that's what we figured out figured out last time. You know, me and random internet pictures. I have no idea where this is. So, random background. <laughs> so uh, this is for trustees, since this is a committee that's not a voting committee. This is um, probably not a necessary step, but we can go ahead and do it. You all are actually the only voting members here. Everybody else is advisory. <laughs> it's up to you to decide whether or not no, we can't not count. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Maybe. I better read it. I'll leave it seems a little. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I think you would choose D and then just select distance. Okay. So whichever one of you would like to make okay. the motion. I move that Tony Townsend's request to attend today's meeting of the JMRL board remotely due to a personal matter, specifically distance, be approved. I say aye. <laughs> aye. <laughs> there you are, Tony. You're legitimized. I, right, I, where get, are you? You I guess I guess the, the option because he didn't feel like getting dressed up is not on that list. So <laughs> <laughs> I didn't dress up. So <laughs> um, okay, if you'd like, I'll roll us through the agenda. Yeah, so uh, it's been a busy summer. Um, I, every subcommittee has met at least once, um, and each of them has come up with a draft of one to three or four uh, potential goals. So the way uh, I think this meeting should go <laughs> is that each committee will report out a little bit on what they talked about earlier in the summer, and then we'll look at that list of, of draft uh, goals that each committee has come up with uh, as just a starting place for here's what the strategic planning committee thinks are things that need to be in the strategic plan. Um, and then we will turn focus to community engagement. We'll talk about a public survey. So that group worked on uh, incorporating elements of the staff survey, which got talked about in every subcommittee as well, and then um, turning that into a public survey. We got a little bit of feedback from the Center for Nonprofit Excellence on it. We sent it out for them to review, but most of their feedback had to do with format and situation and things like that. It wasn't really <laughs> content-wise. So I believe Latasha alerted me a half an hour ago that she has <laughs> Non-asked if I promise. I think calling down a little bit is a good idea. And then I think it's up to us to to uh, set a path forward here. And this chance that some committees are kind of done for now is just me as a larger team. What we're doing now is trying to solicit outside partner and community input on things that we do. Sound about right? Great. Okay, so staffing and finance subcommittee. Um, who is the chair of staffing and finance? Susan. <laughs> Do you remember what we talked about in? Wait, I'll uh, give you a hint. <laughs> yes, it was uh, yeah July 11th here. I'll share. I'll remind everybody. I'll share the screen so that Tony can see that um, all the notes and all the information are within that subfolder there. So there's a separate staffing and finance subfolder, and the notes are in there. Uh, so basically, Susan, um, you want to talk about funding? What we talked about. And then staff. Okay, well, so we want to take a look of course in compensation by looking at the new city planning that they have and trying to adjust the cost of living along with whatever as best we can according to the plan that's going to be put forward in the city. Um, then we wanted to take, we wanted all of our boards of supervisors all of our funding sources to also know a little bit more about the needs and how JMRL is funded uh, by looking at the state aid, by looking at um, all of the staffing at JMRL. We wanted to be able to also take a look at where our funding comes from, where it goes and how it's distributed. Um, also about replacement equipment and any other funding that we might have. Then we wanted to look at staffing in particular we wanted to make sure that staff were equipped with what they needed and empowered to work. Um, we wanted to take a look at the organization of JMRL. 
uh, what the job descriptions are? Do we need to change some of them? Do we need some specializations? Do we need to change our assessment? And we wanted to standardize all of our interview questions so that we don't have to come up with new sets every time they're already in place. Uh, we wanted to add to the training. Of course, we wanted training to be relevant to their position, add cross-training to, and also build in some capacity and competency. We don't want people just to touch on circulation. We want them to build their capacity for what they have circulation or any other thing that they may choose to work. Then we want to work on retaining our staff. Um, look at employee safety, looking at collaborations, looking at mentorships for new employees, and look at better uh, something more in house as far as news, uh, newsletter, and also maybe some cross the system collaborations. So people will work with each other and make us more of a system rather than isolated branches. Anybody else who's in that subcommittee anything to add? I can throw a few things in there. So some of this came directly out of that, the um, staff survey, but of course it was not news to myself at least about the need to uh, uh, review JMRL's compensation plan and, and how it's uh, how it's structured and how it's going to work. Uh, so to the questions about, uh, Susan, I heard a question there about where the city is on their salary plan. So they um, have a new compensation policy uh, that they are bringing in front of city council this August, uh, potentially to have a vote on, which is basically saying, here's the concept that we're going to use moving forward for compensation for city. So it's not including JMRL. Once that's done, uh, they are going to take the results of this study and try to match them against their individual classes and then the individual positions within those classes. So, you know, they, they might have, uh, similar to JMRL, they might have somebody whose title is administrative assistant in 10 or 15 different departments. They want to make sure that they have some, the commonality between those things and figure out where that class of jobs should be categorize and then where each of the individuals are. Somebody might have been there 10 years, somebody started yesterday, somebody brings these other skills to the table. So uh, they are anticipating a multi-year project to implement that and roll it out. Uh, the city has agreed to help JMRL with a similar process with JMRL, but it is at the end of their process. So they have to get theirs done first. Um, so we're hoping to start work on that this fall, but likely it won't be in play for the next fiscal year. So we're going to have to look at other ways to try and meet this goal until we have that data, that plan. Um, and then the other one, I think that's good. I, I can't think of anything else that needs to be in there that we discussed. Any questions about that subcommittee? Oh, I remember what it was. Um, Susan was talking about educating stakeholders, and we talked about how uh, not only do we get our, you know, we get new library board members to the board, we also get new uh, elected officials in each five jurisdictions on an annual or semi-annual basis. And even the ones that have been there for a while don't interact with the library's funding structure that often, maybe once a year when it gets discussed in their overall budgets. And even then it's part of a much bigger picture. So uh, not, not only is this for new uh, elected officials or staff at every location, but it's also for existing ones just to, to kind of help build those bridges and that communication and know how they're funding JMRL and what are other resources. Is there a strategy for that? No, this is just the, the, just the idea that we would try to I think the strategies that we discussed were trying to come up with some promotional materials that would kind of simplify that. This has been talked about, the policy committee's talked about this for a while too. So like an infographic of sorts to say, here's where the money goes. Yeah, the county goes. Yeah, goes. yeah, and here's what you don't have, have to pay for. Potentially. They might get from that. <laughs> I think the last thing I said was it also to tell them what they don't have to pay for. So like you're not paying for all the books and materials. You're not paying for the equipment. You're not paying for the program. No. Right. <laughs> Good news. Okay. Next up is technology and facilities. Um, Kayla, do you want me to bring those notes uh, up? Sure. Well, I'm. Yeah. Sure. I mean, I, I was just going to read from the, the current draft goals, but we can. Yeah. Yeah, these were just, this has been my dumping ground for all the stuff we did. Um, we did ask the Library Technology Advisor Committee to take a look at other five-year plans and see what other libraries that are our peer libraries, both on, in the state and nationally, are doing 
Um, and so we kind of pulled together that, pulled together the feedback from the staff survey responses. And for the most part, technology and facilities were rated good. Everyone has a lot to say about central needing <laughs> renovation. So not everyone, but a lot of a, a lot of the responses included things about that and also safety as, as a part of that. Um, and then technology, yeah, so between the, between the two, we kind of had a lot of um, good feedback for the types of things we're looking for. Uh, but as a whole, for facilities, we, we broke it into like providing modern, welcoming, safe spaces for staff and patrons. So again, like bringing yeah, onto that cool. feeling from both patron perspective and staff. Um, and then working with your working with jurisdictional partners to preserve and update aging libraries and police. Um, and we specifically wanted to mention student planning and advocating for a central library renovation to meet the changing needs of the community. Um, and then also review the needs for expanded and updated library kiosks, just kind of as, a, as an idea. And then having outreach be regional. So again, I think all of our things sort of overlap with talk about access and outreach later, like that's also the facility, the library. Um, and then for technology, um, equity and accessibility technology to educate, provide access to our patrons and um, also improve. And then also to maintain the infrastructure. We need to be able to buy new computers, buy replacement things and repair things. Word and to keep the digital things that allow the digital resources to grow. Okay. So, yeah, this is a robust document here where Kayla picked out all the staff comments that are in there. So, you get the ones that have to do with facilities or technology. That was very useful. And the other link does pop into things that. The TAC one we pulled out some things that the other libraries are saying. So if we do want to pull from their verbiage in some cases, that's that. Some of them do also mention expanding facilities, growth like Loudoun County, fastest growing county. Well, we, I guess, growing county, we can use some of that information um, that they're doing. Sort of I think our introduction, which we'll have to write, should include for all of that demographic data about who we serve, what our statistical, what we have been doing. What's about that? Pulling from the most recent census, Jim Okay. Anything else from anybody else in technology and facilities? <laughs> Had you thought about beyond renovating Central, um, building a new building? Talk to Jerry about that. Uh, um, just because when my husband talks about renovation as opposed to new construction, it's always harder to do renovation. And a renovation project ends up costing you more money than if you just built from the beginning. But you get exactly what you want. Yeah, ultimately, that's the, it's uh, Charlesville and Albemarle's decision there. You know, I would not be opposed to having a discussion with them about that. Uh, the problem is that we would want something still serving downtown Charlottesville. So where, except for the Landmark Hotel, yeah. where we room <laughs> for that, basically. Uh, but this was Jerry's big pitch a few years ago. We brought it to the city and, and we actually talked, we were just half joking about the Landmark Hotel. Like, hey, if that ever gets... Torn, torn down. Right? Can we put parking and, and this and that there? So I think we would be open for it. I don't think that the city and the county are have considered that. We'd have to find another use for the existing building because they wouldn't be able to tear that building. No, yeah. it's an historic building. You're right. It would cost a lot more to put it in. The print that we have. Yeah. Yeah. And there's. I think the focus has been on a renovation of that building and keeping that service downtown. If there are a way to keep it 
in downtown Charlottesville with the new construction. And I, don't, I think that both the city and the county would be open to that discussion. So when we get to the actual kind of wordsmithing of what we're doing, we could leave that, you know, address the needs of having regional headquarters and those things. We could generalize it. Okay, so next up is access and outreach and collections, all in one. Yeah. <laughs> And this is a, a vague memory because it was six weeks ago, pre-vacation for me. But um, basically, this is what at the end of this document is what we came out with, which became the draft goals. So they're also in the draft goals document. Um, and I I do remember very clearly we had a lot of echoes with the other subcommittees that when we started talking about access, ability, and technology, and and you know there's there's a lot of you know, um, but the overarching things that we came up with were adaptable and flexible library service, including the ability for staff to uh, review and change programs and services as community needs change. Um, and uh, we really are networking, making sure that we are connecting with the groups in our community um, to the users, their users, and also our users. This umbrella also includes identifying and working to bring library service to them. This is this next bullet point is the physical spaces, which again we were like, well, so this should be facilities, but it does highlight the access portion of facilities that having safe, secure physical buildings is an access issue. It's not just storing and a place for staff to work, but it's making sure the community, um, we're removing barriers for the community to actually access our, our functions. And so we can have a conversation about where that goes, but I think it's pulling that out is good. Offering diverse and high quality programs, resources, and services um, to create a cultural inclusion and learning literacy of all kinds through programming and access. Um, we had a good conversation about outreach um, too because we do have you know, the, the mission to expand outreach services um, and doing it responsibly. And underneath that were specific goals of additional vehicles, additional staff, you know, a regional framework for, for expanding outreach services. Um, and also, the outreach of not going to community groups. Um, this again is an echo to the access bullet point of, of finding underserved populations and working to bring library service to them. Um, and then in the collections side of things, we want to continue to provide our community with high quality collections that reflects the community in a variety of formats. Um, this is because formats and uh, what is contained in the library collection necessarily changes with what's available in terms of technology and building. Uh, we want to keep on and um, responsive as we go forward. So building that, that response into the goal. Promoting awareness and discovery of library resources. Making sure that we have a collection and people can access it because they know what's in it. That can be uh, making sure we have a robust catalog and good metadata, in addition to, again, the echo of facilities, making sure people have access to the physical collection and also that ties in. I remember we had um, a good conversation too. In the current five year plan that we're operating under, access and outreach are one goal. And Susan advocated well that they should be separated into access and outreach, which we've done here. But you'll notice that the second goal, meet people where they are, is also already included under access. It's the same goal there. So really, we're only at this point talking about one separate outreach goal, which is okay. Yeah. Um, I like the the this subcommittee. I think um, the language I like because it says here's the broad overarching thing, and then here are some examples of how we can get there. So something to keep in mind. Anybody else from that group to report out?
Okay, maybe we should um, flip flop the review current draft goals before we talk about community engagement, kind of to review. So we just did a review of what they all are, but look at the big picture there and just talk those through before we start talking about how we're going to open this up for outside of state. Does that make sense? So we're left with um, overall goal areas of access, outreach, collections, funding, staffing, facilities, and technology, which is one more than we've generally used at seven. We could, again, talk about squeezing access and outreach together. So one thing that we talked about when we first started this process, excuse me, in the spring, is whether or not to continue to use that structure, or one idea was to try to kind of um, use JMRL's mission and values and to put these under our mission and values in some sense, or some over different thing entirely. I was telling Meredith this morning that um, the state is working on a, a handbook for creating strategic plans that they asked me for review for, and I reviewed it, and their suggestion is a one-page <laughs> document, <laughs> which has never been my strength. I haven't okay. asked so <laughs> uh, But that is what they're going to recommend moving forward, that you have an infographic of sorts that's tied to your mission values. And, and we saw that when we were reviewing other library plans, yeah. and I thought it was incredibly effective. I think that there's what I'm sensing in here is a lot of repetition. And I'm not saying that any of the goals aren't important. It's just, do we have to say it four times? Exactly. Like, could we say it one time really strong and then sort of walk away? And then the other thing is also to take some of the, the statements and take out the details because the details are sort of documented. Yeah. So we could think about sort of it being two documents maybe, which is to say that there's a little more staff detail yeah, definitely. We've been talking, the, the subcommittees have been talking about the need to have like a parallel uh, operational plan. Right. And that would be more, it would by nature have to be flexible uh, because if the board says we want, we want to improve access, the, the, the library staff right now might say, well, that's by renovating the central library. But in two years, we might find out that it's by building a new central library. You know, the, 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 the document has to be flexible enough yes. to handle that. So it could be that we do a one pager that really is um, the, the vision for the library and the goals and how we set, how we feel like we fit in the community and that could be something that would be easy to distribute and that would be very accessible for people. Fitting that's, our that's excess state, goal. That's the state's point. <laughs> I like this because it's nice and clean. Yeah. Everybody knows exactly what you're talking about. It's As opposed to a one-page visioning document. A, a one-page like this, with yeah. the, the topics like this. I, I love the idea of blending it with our mission. Yeah. But I think people might get buddy down with the verbiage. I think we definitely would want our mission in there, and that's yeah. easy enough. Well. But yeah. not necessarily. Yeah. So am I hearing a uh, maybe a little subgroup? to take this and try to turn it into a one page in that one page of verbiage which is has to be really not a lot because if we're going to put graphics in there then it's, it's like headers like we want it yeah. needs to be I, you know, I, a bullish you just want bullet points for just the top powerpoint all we got well, i mean remember the definition of goal that's kind of put out there is that it's just a broad primary outcome so a lot of this other stuff has ideas that are more strategy. Yeah. So we're not talking about doing a, a full strategic plan in this sense, but so much of a highlight of the goals for the organization. So I think if we keep those definitions in mind of what a goal is and what a strategy is, that will help create more brief, like you're saying, like headlines or headers for each of these. Yeah, can you put that in the comment here? It's just like a oh, I, I guess I'm not. I'll join the Zoom, sure. No, uh, just in the doc. In oh, in the doc. doc. So I'm in the doc. There we go. Sorry. I can show an example of something that kind of melds those two. So here's the one page, like mm -hmm. somewhere up here would say, "Here's our here's our plan. Here's our mission," and a sentence about each of the categories that we've identified, right? So that's kind of what we're talking about now. And it would mean culling down what we've already worked on even farther. And then some 
Yeah. Um, the rotation a, part of it is a little yeah, weird. This is a fake nail. This is a two pager. Yeah. <laughs> it is a two -pager. It's front back. It's front back. <laughs> Something like that. So they take the the categories and they, you know, they would kind of, to Susan's point, like condense even farther what we said to just a few words about each one of those goals that we have or objectives, right? Um, well, let's not get the semantics of it. But, uh, the the um, right. We want to maintain the hierarchy there. People read stuff. Yes. Yeah. Yes. As opposed to the, yeah. As opposed to the. All of us. Yeah. <laughs> Opposed to a 20 page thing, right? Yeah. Okay, so am I hearing some support for let's try to kind of call this even further and not worry about the graphics and what it looks like right now, but just how we could kind of get. And, and I'm, I'm, we're way jumping the gun here because we have yet to get the community input that might drastically change what we think these goals are. This right now, what we have is a draft of what this group of 12 people thinks that the library strategic plan needs to be with some input from our own staff, but that could change. All right, let me write that so down. Do you, do you, are you suggesting that we cut it down before we get the community input or that we should wait for community input, but our goal is that eventually we'd like to take all that stuff in and make it as much support. I think we can run on a parallel track there where we can start working on the community input and then at the same time start calling what we already have and then wait and see how that needs to be adapted based on that. Some of, the, some of it might not even change because uh, the, the community might be saying the same thing. Yes. Or if there's something entirely new, then we need to, we can stop on the other track what well, we're doing. Like we yeah. <laughs> already have a framework in place. I have a feeling that the community's input is going to fall in because of the way we've structured the questions, for one, but also because of the, the broad nature of the five or six areas that we're asking about. Like, clearly, if they have a suggestion or an idea, it's going to have something to do either with the services we're offering or the buildings that we have or, you know, the outreach that we should be doing that we're not reaching. Did they have an open-ended, I did read through it, did they have an open-ended answer place there anywhere? I can't remember. The, Was it all multiple yeah. choice? No, there place, yeah. you know, just, uh, why? 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 But, why but at the end, end there was a... Like a question. And and a I think like I have a totally different idea of what I want. Are we talking about the, we're talking about the, the survey. community, the community yeah. one that we're working on yeah. or the staff one yeah. that we've already received? The community one. Okay. okay. Who else? Staff. The staff myself. one had open-ended one. We had the black one. Yeah. Yeah, and that's where we get, that's so where you get. Do you have anything else to add? Do you have anything yeah. else to add? So yeah. that, that could take somebody in a new direction. But, you know, I think that. You're right, it could take what we thought was our primary statement under something and take it in a different direction. Like, I don't think anyone, I don't know how many of us walked in thinking that safety was the thing that we would hear again and again from staff. And so then we could integrate that into our statement about facilities. And so I think it would be interesting to hear what the public has to say about my, my only concern about calling down to that amount, I hear all the, I, Sideways again. It's, you can be sideways no, at the top. Worse. They're using. We're not going to use that. My only concern <laughs> is that people won't see their own thoughts reflected. The broader you are, the less they're going to see the input that they gave reflected. So think about staff saying safety is a number one right. priority and, here. And, and if there's a that. goal that just said provide, I guess if it says provide safe. You know, welcoming, places, welcoming places for everybody. Yeah. Are are thinking just about staff now? Are they going to see their their desire for for better safety procedures in that? I think that if we're talking about overall overreaching goals, and then what, and we're also talking about the parallel document for operational manual, we yeah. make sure that what goes into that uh, does address the things that that we want to make sure people see. Um, I mean, if I were editing their goals, I would say your staffing and work environment is not a goal, it's a statement. <laughs> their it's their the final, bottom, the bottom, bottom thing. Right. It says, it's a place where staff and people sort of thrive at the bottom, volunteer staff. Yeah, it's That's not that. saying it's like. It's very like vision statement -y. Yeah. Yeah, it's, high thought, right? yeah, but then other ones are saying grow library yeah. relationships and tell the library story. That yeah. we're just yeah. really good at herbs. Yeah. Yeah. We need yeah. some more editing. Yeah. Side. Um, <laughs> 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 we're 
you're, you're going to keep going. Just hear your voice going. The goal. The goal. <clears throat> So many times I, yeah, we've had to be like, mm, just, okay, we're adding too much. So let's pull it back a little bit. <laughs> I think Meredith's right. Like we're talking about putting together kind of a, a flash sheet of what we're aiming for, but we're going to have a strategic plan that the staff is actually going to use and reference as we create work plans and stuff like that. And I think as long as we have that available to the public and to the staff, for further access, like a link or something, even at the bottom of, of this, where they can see the workout or just announce however we need to do it, but they can see that, yes. And then hopefully they're getting that feedback from their supervisors and their colleagues. Like, these are our ideas, these are our goals, but this is our strategy and these are our objectives. This is how we're gonna do it. And this is how we wanna get it done. And this is how we're gonna work together to see that being it done. Yeah. I think they will hopefully see that reflected. And if we structure this right with the proper umbrella goals, that operations manual plan uh, will be agile enough that as we go through the years, and we'll be constantly reviewing and changing and adding. Yeah, I always have this. These are always flexible documents because life happens. So you have to be willing to, uh, yeah. Yeah, we're exactly. required in order to be eligible for state aid, we're required to review them at least annually. Yeah. Um, so having the broader, more, yeah, more agile. I like the idea that we we would put something out that's very readable and accessible yeah. for our for our customers and for our staff, so that there it's on our site. You can see you can see what are we about. Here you go. You know, it's nothing. We're not we're not saying like here's 40 pages <laughs> to find out what we're about. We never have our current document out on the library floor. <laughs> <laughs> but you could have something like this <laughs> on the library floor for patrons, though. Well, admittedly, that's why a lot of these documents have a summary at the beginning because they're so long that just lists out these are all our goals. To read. <laughs> yeah, and then it's like now if you really want to get into the nitty gritty, keep flipping through. So, so. You can make the summary pretty. Exactly. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so kind of what I'm hearing now is a little bit different than what I was thinking though. So it's more like continue on the path that we're going and then at the end of it create a one page like summation type document. Though. I think with what we have we can start the framework like this. I think you were saying work in yeah. parallel. Let's let's take what we have and try and see if we can come up with five good goals instead of seven, maybe. Because mm -hmm. I think we do have a lot of overlap. Yeah. Uh, taking all of our little individual things, putting them to five, make that, and then see when we get community input, how that matches what we already are. Because I think the community in input more than anything will lend itself more to the strategies and stuff, because there might be something that we would, like, I think they'll fall under a lot of our goals, but I think what it may be is the strategies or the priorities that we might have set under those goals are really what might change. Like, we really want to do this, and we see a way to do this, but you know what? The public's really clamoring for this right now, so we need to put this on the back burner. I think that might be one of the, the biggest things, not so much an overarching goal, but the how we do it. Yeah, I think if, if one of the things that we focused on was probably changing our headings to be a little bit more inclusive. Like, I think patron experience is a nice, a nice broad thing so that it incorporates a lot of stuff about and community engagement also and then putting staffing and work environment together would address safety and facility in a lot of ways yeah and money so like I think I think some if we rethink some of our headings we could roll these into better categories you could also hunt think. around for some yeah. other ones that have five categories of Just the, the key words yeah, from okay. that value, yeah. community service, mm -hmm. access to information, lifelong learning, welcoming the environment, community engagement. There's five. So I not, asked you know, to, there was a nice split. Oh, no. So no. not to the whole value statement, which says uh, we. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
but just the core value. And then a general goal that's related to that yeah, like headline, headline, like this. They sort of explain yeah. how, how is lifelong learning a goal that we're going to do either? Our exactly. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think that it was really great that people all went through and got all those ideas, but also tried to understand. And I think that you're right. You're going to see so much overlap that it might be quite easy to say, like, okay, this one, this one, and this. One. They're all saying sort of the same thing. What do we like? How do we like it the best? Or is there another way to say that? And then try to find One of the things that I, I keep coming back to when you were talking about reducing this to bullet points is the logo, the JMRL motto. Grow, learn, connect. Um, and is there do do we want to incorporate that in these talk in these you know bullet points in this one page two page handout? Um, is that even relevant to this? Uh, I just throwing that one out there. I think um, my first uh, reaction, Tony, is that that uh, those kind of key tags are in our mission statement. You know, uh, that's something we tried hard to do so that if the mission statement is at the top there, then it incorporates Grow, Learn, Connect. Yeah, yeah, okay. I could see it. But yeah, I mean, I think that that could be just as easily, uh, that could be a model for how we would we would have that one page grow and then statements would be about helping people grow and learning, helping people learn and connecting, helping people. I mean, I don't want to tell you how to do your branding, but I mean... <laughs> part of my job, but I, I mean, you have it as part, you, often people would put their one sheet on their actual stationery, and so yeah. you do yeah. have that, you know, if, if. So were you saying we need to reduce it down to three bullet points? <laughs> he just thought that it be. No, yeah. no, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about an, an overall framework. Um, yeah, yeah. No, I, I'm not. I'm not a fan of, of reducing bullet points to you know one, one, two, three. I, I, I don't think that works at all. That might be a. I, I hate a to say bit. this, but it might be a little, a little vague. A little too far. <laughs> Five is fine. Three. <laughs> but I do think keeping those three, three you know, those three concepts under each of our yeah. of our yeah. goals yeah. is good to like maybe guide our language yeah, as well. Language that's kind yeah. Of yeah. I was just gonna say I, I think it's you know as closely as you can align this with your already existing mission statement, I think that's yeah. Like yeah. the better because that's, you know, that's how you reflect on your experience and think so, so it's great. Yeah. That's what I was always taught is your mission statement should guide what right. you're. So uh, what I'm hearing is that we're going to try to come up with just the first pass at, like this is a first pass. Um, these current goals are, are a first pass here. I'm going to take this off. Yeah. <laughs> at uh, goals that this group thinks that we would have if we were to use the format that we've used in the past here. So we're going to do something similar where it'd be, okay, if we're going to try this new thing, which is a one-page infographic, it would start with our uh, mission statement and include the core values from each of our values and then try to come up with some uh, synthesis of these within those core values. This does sound like a little uh, brainstorming session at some point. The jam board is still there. If we want to like plop, plop them on there. <laughs> Move them around. Well, I mean, <laughs> it does actually move them around. I was gonna, so you could put all those little. You might also want to try a word, word cloud. Word cloud. Like, word what word. are the words that are, are coming are coming out? You know. That was a suggestion for the um, that the state had for when you receive your community input, mm -hmm. dump it all into a yeah. word cloud and see like what words come up the most often. I think Richmond did something similar with theirs. Like one of their public surveys they did for like their expansion and, and renovation, I think they dropped a giant word and bomb. To show the results there. Yeah. Yeah. I, just say, I think it's a useful exercise because people are answering. Like I noticed in the survey, for instance, there were a couple of questions that were very similar. So if people are answering something maybe in the wrong place or they're reiterating something, then it could all come together and you can see how much. That's when I was going back through and I printed it out. And I was like, we could clean this up. It seems like Natasha's you know, <laughs> got our eyes on that. Fewer so. questions is always better. With okay. Um, well, I don't know that uh, Meredith. Uh, see, do you think we need to put together a group now to start working on that, or can we just kind of? I can start something and and all all of us can look at it, or what do you think is the best? I don't know how do people feel about that. Is it I just feel like we've got published authors, we've got uh, editors, we've got in house expertise here, <laughs> graphic designers, so, uh, but we'll find one when needed. 
why don't we start with, uh, I'll do a little bit of work and share it out with everybody, and then we'll take a little time to all work on it, and then maybe get a few people to take an hour or two to try to clear it up. That's a good plan. I like that. I like the concept and the, where we're going with this. Yeah, we and should, then to keep all this other stuff because you're going to start yeah, thinking we'll about this into a parallel the, for the staff document of how you're going to make all these. <laughs> 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 So one thing I'll say is that when the full library board meets in August, we should probably clue them in on this because uh, those of them that have been around for various other five-year plans are used to a longer format. Um, just say, here's where we're looking, here's what we think the state's going to yep. recommend. Uh, and that there will be more detail yeah. available. Um, and then also where the, the information that we have, anything we have about our the survey. It might be interesting to see if there's any takeaways from the survey that we could include in our one pager. Is there something that we can say about what the community feel, how the community feels about the library? What, that we'll see? what the state was recommending is that, that you prepare a narrative to share this. So when we have our plan and we want to share it back out with, say, our five jurisdictional partners, or say we want to share it with the partner organizations that we ask to help gather information or the schools, that in that narrative, you basically do a summary that would have some of the demographic data and some of the here's what we got from the public and here's the process, things okay. like that. Yeah, I mean, making it a one pager does not lessen the amount of work that needs to be done <laughs> by any means. No, but I think also, I mean, I think it, it could be a part of an interesting story to the to the general public once it's finished to say, so this is how the process was, like this is show your work, you know, this is who we asked and this is what we heard from the public. And I mean, I, I feel like based on other surveys, people are going to say that they love the library, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, our, to share. our goal is to get to folks who don't use the library, too. And to find out why. That's always the goal. The state talks a lot about, they use the Harwood Institute's method, um, which is a, a community engagement. I guess, um, and it involves a lot of community meetings, like actually getting people into a room. And one of the suggestions was have your trustees each bring somebody with them who doesn't use the library to have this discussion. You know, so uh, bring an unused work day. <laughs> Put them to work. Yeah. Uh, the library. I'm interested in you know. Let's talk about the survey now, and then we can talk about other methods of community engagement. Okay. <laughs> We, the yeah, should we go back to the community engagement subcommittee report? Let me clear out some of this mess I've got here. Too many tabs. Too many tabs, yeah. <laughs> All right, so the community engagement subcommittee met at the end of June. That's been a while, right? Um, Anything to share from the meeting itself, Latasha? I mean, in, in general, we did talk briefly about the survey information and, you know, disappointment that we didn't get more feedback, but that we were able to see from the staff, staff, see, the staff um, but that we were able to see quite a bit of um, a pattern and the different uh, things on there, especially um, compensation and outreach, but also like more system-wide communication and collaboration, which popped up from some of the talks of the goals and the other committees. Uh, but then we really spent time talking about the public survey ideas. Um, we had kind of a big collection of questions and stuff that other organizations and stuff had done. So we would have it there to kind of review and give us a, a kickoff um, for how to do the survey, which is also why there's a lot there and why I'm still going. I think we can clean this up. I think we can. Clean this up. And we did try to get into, you know, do we want to do that, any type of incentives? Do we want to talk about working with community partners? Like, uh, well, we do want to talk about community partners when trying to get out to parts of the population that don't regularly use the library system. Um, what our ideals were, like, we would love to get at least a thousand responses. Uh, and then having the branches working within their communities, especially, so not necessarily coming from 
literally central and going out, but you know, having some ownership at the branch at the branch level to talk to their community partners and and get this information into people's hands and seeing, you know, what groups they may be able to talk with um, or ask them to distribute these. Uh, and then we just played around for a little while with the survey questions and and went from there. So I remember the last public survey we did for the last five year plan, the, the outside Charlottesville Albemarle jurisdiction, I think that had the most responses was um, one that got into the high schools and they had uh, like every kid in the high schools basically filled out. So their numbers were what we have for responses and it was good too because there are kids that don't come to the library for various reasons. So. Okay, well then shall we look at where we are now basically. So um, this is what it looks like. And we did decide that we would try to incentivize at, at some points, you know, like fill this out. And if you are interested in entering in a like a raffle, then you can leave your contact information here. Um, bookmark. And your QR code. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so first, um, trying to collect just some information about who's answering here. So the the age groups that we selected are the ones that we look at when we talk about juveniles, and young adults. Um, so that's zero to eleven for kids, twelve to eighteen for young adults. We had some discussion about uh, you know what we should do after that. Should it just be eighteen for the rest of your life, or are we trying to figure out? who our users are uh, in the intermediary categories there. So we did end up doing 19 to 35, 35, 36 to 59, 59 and 60 up. Um, do you have school age children, 18 and under? That was the one where they asked like, what is school age children? I put 18 because I assumed. Yeah, I mean, that's what we call juvenile cars. Yeah. Point. That's the age that you get out of high school generally. Where do you live? You have a library card. <laughs> Some information about how often do you visit public libraries? Daily, weekly, monthly, once a year or less, never. And I will, if I can interject quickly, David. Yeah. It doesn't show here, but if you get a never on this, it will fast jump and fast forward to number seven. Which is, oh. if you don't use it regularly, why not? So, Did we stop asking you about do you use the children's yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it doesn't save you a lot of time, but it saves a little bit. <laughs> it's a little hint if you'd like to make this a shorter, period. yeah. But it, it might come up later. We're asking if they visit specifically physical locations, not use the library. Yeah, that's what the question is now. Yeah. Okay. So so you're wondering about the digital, digital yeah. 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 Right, put a, put a pin in that and see if it comes yeah. up later. If not, digital. we want to yeah, address that. So I'm wondering if the two should be swift in order about um, which well, which, which location and then on average how often you visit? Because they might think about it better after they've checked the different branches that they visit, because maybe they visit more than one branch. I and don't know. then they might change their answer on how. When you hit never, it doesn't immediately take you. It's when you go, oh, I thought there. it would skip. Well, it says skip to question seven. Well, on the printout. So I didn't know if that, didn't we set it up that way? I well, thought. we did, but if they hit, ne so basically if they hit, huh. should the digital There's, library be a branch? I, mean, we're, I guess we're going to see how it should be addressed. Yeah, yeah. it's not. It yeah, I think be. I think probably it needs to be in that list there. Do you need to say um, you know, the libraries within the JMR? I was wondering that too, rather than like, oh yeah, when I go to California to visit my sister, I go. To go to the library. Maybe we should do. I'm in the editor's office well, sure. right now. If they say they go to libraries, Why and not don't have the JMR library card. That might also be useful information because they usually visit public libraries when they don't come to ours. Is that a problem? I say otherwise, yeah, language like um, on average, or yeah, on average, how often do you use JAMRL libraries or resources or yeah. services? Yeah. And make it oh, okay. a more broader. Right, because they're going to Yeah. 
I think maybe if I do it, everybody can see. That works. Oh, sorry. No, she's I good. Hit. You did it. I mean, you can still see if I'm editing it. Do you use, what were we saying? JMRL. JMRL library services. Locations or services. And services. And services, yeah, something like that. Or services. Or resources, might yeah. might use services, but not use the physical branch. Yeah. I think services is fine. Yeah, I think resources, because if, if I saw that and I said, I check out ebooks, that's, I would, I would, I don't, I would. Yeah, that's, that's more of a resource than a service, yeah. yeah. Because that covers the digital branch. Yeah. yeah. Also covers uh, just come and use your bathroom. Share my location. Or your bathroom. <laughs> there you go. Well, and that's where it is showing. Like if you if you say never, you go to section two, and then okay. But that's it's not immediate. I don't think. I think that's where I I, I don't know. I haven't tested out saying never. Okay. I don't know if it skips you asking which bathroom. Yeah. It looks a little different with the printout and all of this. So. Yeah. The printout. We yeah. might not print this out. We might. Actually, need to do another version. Yeah, yeah, I completely agree. We add the digital branch to the. Where's never? Never. Yeah, I think we'll I think we need to hit next. next. That's when it goes to section two. It goes if to library. Why not? Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. That's fine. Um. So we're interested in adding. Do we say website versus digital branch? Will people know what digital branch means? I think you could say website and digital and website slash digital services. So resources. Library. Library. Yeah. 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 I think e library because if you say website, like there are people that are, it's going to skew, I think, because there are people that are going into the library once a week that use the website once or twice a week or whatnot. And they're just, using so they're just yeah, borrowing. What's it now then? When's the program? And then borrowing materials electronically. Like library slash digital branch or yeah. parentheses digital branch. Okay. You track usage. How do you list it? Do you list e of which, so, yeah, like, e brand by yeah. branch, do you say e what size is the e the, the, the digital? Yeah, um, we use a couple different metrics. It usually has to do with the materials that check out from that location. That's the statistic that we report to the state. Um, but by jurisdiction, we include uh, digital materials. Right. Marl's patrons, it includes the books they checked out and the digital materials they checked out. But did you say that? Yes. Did you say it just past north side? Yeah. yeah yes. uh -huh. So how do we say we call that? I think we should call it. Yeah. We knew it was coming. <laughs> David warned us. And they're checking all that apply, so they could. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. 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 But it's um, not how people are going to see it. E-library, digital library. Yeah, I think digital. Yeah. Yeah. Library. 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 Gonna make as much sense as digital. Library. From so the call it digital library on the website when people go to look up any of our databases, ebooks, or the digital library. Yes. Yeah. Di digital resources? Does that does that make sense? Digital resources? Tony suggesting digital resources. We also like that. That might be better that we're not too that like Canopy. Or Canopy. Or yeah. Because the like digital resources counts formal then I Online resources? I, I would go back to digital library. But digital library going once? The problem is we are all too yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. random person on the street. Oh, I don't need to let this Okay. Sorry. You start to think if you don't understand what this I think digital library. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, the, so that was section one, which was kind of uh, not all demographic, but it's kind of informational. You know, here's the baseline of what you're, who you are, and how you use the library as you do. Section David two. Just lied on his stance that he never uses the library. <laughs> <laughs> never been there. Where is it? Do we have something in the front that says it'll take about this long to finish this? <laughs> Google can do that for you. It can set a thing. Surveys, I start and I'm like, no. <laughs> eight pages? So, Are you kidding? Yeah. Eight, no, eight sections. Section. It's, it's Thank more you. than eight. <laughs> Don't <laughs> tell them that. <laughs> okay, right. Section two will only show up if you hit never. Right. So it says, yeah, you know, because he's after section one, go to section three. 
unless you hit never on going and then then don't come here. So, so it's then, really like since you don't use the library. Since you don't use the library, please <laughs> tell us why. <laughs> Just yeah. Yeah. Okay. Do we want another in there? Do we want an open ended? There is an other at the end. There yeah. is an yeah. so, yeah. If somebody click other, it'll open a comment box. If you click other, it opens. Yep. How many? Yeah. How many options? There's a lot. There's a lot. Yeah, I think we need to make that. Yeah. Less Probably less to to tear it down. I mean, two, yeah, two, I don't know. We need that don't have a library. I think we've already answered that question, so we could take yeah. that one off, right? Yeah. That's, That's one, one of the ones time. I was thinking. Yeah. You managed. Either way, I don't know. You're the boss. Because they've already said they don't have a class. <laughs> um, like watching you edit on top of each other. It's really amazing. <laughs> you could just say, I use a different library. Yeah. That's another one library. I thought about somebody. Like, yeah, I use a different I, library. I use different library. Yeah. yeah. I, don't, like, I, I want all this information. I don't know what we'd ever do with it, but I, I do want to know. If somebody's yeah. saying, oh, I use the, I, I'm a PBOT student, I use PBCC. Or are they saying, I use the Fluvanna library because it's better than the. It's true. The school college is a temporary thing like, versus, yeah, okay. right versus like, I live in Zion's Crossroad. I'm not going to Louisa. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go to Fluvanna. Are we actually going to pull that information out of the answer to that? Like, when somebody checks there, how many people are going to check that out of the? If we get 2,000 responses, like, how many are going to say never and how many are going to get there? It's probably a moot point. But I don't mind that this one has a lot of options because it's just the one. This the These are our non users. So, this, yeah, well, this is the only <laughs> the thing. They pay. I, I will say at the very bottom, unpleasant and unwelcome. Let's kind let's, of. Yeah, I would like to combine unsafe, unpleasant, unwelcoming. Like, they're all negative. Can we make them library all? Library is bad. Library is unsafe, unpleasant. Library is unpleasant or unwelcoming. Yeah. Yeah. They could all be in one because they're all things that we can. It's an un. Yeah. Yeah. And then that makes that it makes too it much shorter. <laughs> yeah. And that might be a little less like, oh my God, that's a Where lot. are we on that Oxford comma? Um, Everybody's. They're the yes. 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 <laughs> Haven't you seen the memes about what happens when you don't go to your office? You're off this committee. They might <laughs> elaborate under others since right. that's the last one. Like, oh, yeah, this one. Time. Yeah. Since it's the last one, they, they'll say, oh, because, you know, there's yeah, it is and scary people. There we go. Oh, aren't you glad you have so many editors? Yeah. <laughs> I like this one. It's just to tell us what you feel about it. Yep. Okay, so that's if people answered never, they right. would get that section. And then they would go on to the rest of it, which I don't know. Like, Does I think. I know. I mean, they'll it, never use it again. They're, and then they'll probably <laughs> never submit it. So I don't know if maybe after that, maybe that should be the end. Thank but admitting our final thought. But then, like, what yeah, if what there, are some, some, there are some resources in here that could, that, yes, like you're saying, sure. they may not know about. Or right, it's educational. Yeah, or be like, well, these are things that are important. And even you know, if they don't use the library, it, it'd be interesting to know what's important, important to them. Yeah, I would think that's the same thing. So the alternative would be you skip them right to the like the last page last if they wanted to enter. Page. Like, what else do you want to tell us? Or, yeah. Okay. Or make them go through the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. well, well, those um, are, are required. Right? Right. None of them are required. Yeah. 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 Yes, yes, yes. I think we also could do a test, like I could send it to like the prep, like a, a subset of our regular yeah. users. We could send it to the friends board. Makes sense. Yeah. Like, yeah. Well, hey, the library. Yeah. Yeah. We could send it to people. Yeah. Send people send it yeah. to a few of our smaller groups. Yeah. And say, hey, you know, do you have Just any? Just to do a limited yeah. test mm -hmm. on it. No, it does um, not. Yeah, it, it does. So if they if they answer anything, right, yeah, right. Everyone will then start at section three. Because I so, think even if they don't use the library, it's useful to know what's important. Right? Like yeah. saving yeah. the library. So we don't have to. by saying never, you don't actually get any less. You get one more section. Yeah, right. technically, yeah. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> wait, <what? laughs> that's the thing. If we can yeah. make it say, we can make it then go to final thoughts. And not ask them anything else. Let's put a pin in that. That yeah. might be worth doing. But, no, but I guess I guess we're saying we're giving you all this stuff in case you are a library user at a different library. 
Is that why we're saying this? Because these are things you might use? Because I'm not going to get research assistance from the library staff if I never use the library. Yeah, that seems. So why should, I don't know if you're going to want to collect their info on what's important if they're not actually so I yeah, think the question is, the, are there some other ones that? But I think you. Some of the information right that we might get out of this is if they say this is important to me, but I don't use the library. Why? Why are they not like if we offer it and they're it's important to them, but they're not utilizing it? Is it because they don't know we have it? Because you it's know, really a tool to educate. No, it would educate us is to say, oh, they don't know we do this, which means we need our one of our goals to be. It's part of that outreach, yeah. It better paints a picture for us of how we may not be serving the community as well and how we need to build out the awareness. So, so question, yeah. if the never section had something that like gathered, so they didn't have extra sections, but they had like maybe a pared down version of like, what would you use if you use, you know, or, you know, something that got out something else like that, but wasn't confusing at, between a library user and a non-library user. Well, it could skip to what would convince you to use that? I mean, we that's the question. We asked that. We say already already don't visit with the drawing there. I know. I was just wondering, like, go back down because I, I just think it seems counterintuitive. If I was taking a survey, not a library user at all, and I was like, why are they asking me about my library usage that I don't use? And then they would just skip it or they would say, no, I'm it's done not asking about your library use. It's asking about how important you. Right. use it or not. I'm just saying that the top headings was library usage. And that's right. just what I labeled it so we would know. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. I just, I just wonder. Library services. You could mm -hmm. change it from usage to services. Yes. Library so services. They could say which services, if they were going to use it, are important to them. Oh, I didn't know you had a notary. Oh, oh I didn't know you had a scanner. I think to to Meredith Cole's point, like we're we this is not an outreach tool. <laughs> you know, we're not trying to be like, oh, well, hey, non-user, here's all the stuff you're missing. You know, this is to help us, to Meredith Dickens' point, figure out like, what we need to do better in order to either provide access to that person to what they need or to figure out what it is that they need in terms of information seeking that we're not providing. I do look forward to taking the individual results to this person's house and say, you say you don't play the library and this is important. Also, well, I mean, we do ask yeah, them two, two separate questions, which was, what would help you use the library more, or, and why don't you use it? And so I don't know if going through every item of things that we do and be like, what about borrowing books? What, is that not important to you? What about this? Like, I don't know if that's really going to get anything. I, I think that's where there are two places in here that I was getting confused. Not Well, they're sort of parallel. You have the important section. And then you have the satisfaction. Section. I wondered about that too, because again, I copy and paste it from everything that from we everything. found. Yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> I wasn't sure. I was looking at different things, and they talked about the importance of gathering both importance and satisfaction because they do rate different ways depending on, on what you're looking at. But there may be, and it, it would require some work, but it may be beneficial then to get them ahead to maybe a importance section versus a satisfaction section. Well, that next section is really interesting. Not this one, not the library, but this next. If that was not second section, sorry, you kept rolling up. How important are the following services to you? I mean, I broke, that was one big long thing and I broke yeah. it into the same it's question. Right, right, right. right. They kind of say the same thing, but that yeah. second section feels like something that if you, sorry, we'll scroll down a little bit more, David, that you could actually make that for non-users if you took out library. Yeah. So if it was like right. um, programs for adults, programs for young adults, children's programming, community meeting rooms, study rooms, access to, if those are things that are important to you, then I also wonder, so like, okay, I'm just thinking if I was a non-user and I said never, and then it skipped me to section two and it gave me something that looked like this, but it was like, how important are free events for children? And it said free events because like users probably know that they're free, but non-users probably don't know that they're free. So if we were trying to get at like what would make them come in, how important would those things be to you? And then if we had just section two filled out by them, you would know exactly what the non-user said was important to them versus everybody's together. So we have the data on just that. 
I mean, that's that's what this is doing. Well, I know, but like it's also going to be mixed in with the non user or with the with well, we can we can, yeah, we can sort that out. Yeah. Yeah. We can sort, it, sort it by like yeah. everybody who said never. I know that. You you made a very crucial change in language, and this is not the structure of the thing, but you changed the word program to event, and I think that everywhere we should do that. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You are not a library person. Program does not mean what you think it means. Mm -hmm. I remember when I started working in libraries, in my first interview, someone said something about some experience with programming. I was like, what is that? Yeah. I, it, it, events. Oh, oh, yeah. From yeah, that you get that job? <laughs> you did a really good job about not giving them a blank stare. <laughs> I've lost a program. I mean, so I think, Kayla, what you were about to say <laughs> is that this is the same thing. It was just split in half because it was too long. It was too long. <laughs> There's so too we much like, stuff. Yeah. And also, in my head, sort of logic, maybe it's not logical, um, grouped them into like the, the, the first bit or like things you do in person, and then everything else are like things that you might do. With a group, or I don't know why. I don't know why I thought. Right, okay. things that you would do because a friend said, "Hey, let's you know, we'll do this thing." Can you change programming to events? Mm -hmm. So yeah, and that was one. Um, I think that was a bit of confusion we got from the Center for Nonprofit Excellence too. Yeah. They were like, "What do you mean by programs versus like story time? Isn't story time? I mean, do we need to say story time? And and then and classes or events? Or right? But do we make it say if so instead of children's programming events for children?" events for children i think probably we can remove the story time and whatnot because this doesn't help us it doesn't tell us yeah. this question as it constituted doesn't tell us whether or not they're using story time right story time i think we have thought about those as separate things and i am interested in that information you know is the public looking for more story time or less story time? we've been talking a lot about story time in the last few years because we had a, a big covid hole in the middle of the donut there, you know, and always it had been, this is our core library service. And it was like, you don't have to worry about story time. People will come to story time and we can offer all these other things. And then COVID happened and families with new kids had to figure out what else to do during that time. And we reopened and said, okay, come to story time. And people were like, what's story time? So I am interested in still figuring that out. But to me, that would mean it's a different question here. And the response we got from the CNE was that that didn't make any sense to them. So, do we need library book clubs as its own? I think it should say that? book clubs. Well, I think so too. Like, I don't see why it's all saying library instead of anything. It's a library service. It's, yeah. it's merely that's why, because it came from another. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but I bet we did. Are you interested in a book club? Who cares if yeah. it's a library or something else? But it's great if it's a library, because yeah. guess what? You know? Yeah. Because yeah. also, the non user may say, I really like book clubs, but I. I don't go to the library. Yeah, very important, but not the library. Okay, so I think that helps a little bit with the non-user interacting with this section to change that yeah. program, and change that that language you know, about these library things to these general things. So the user, we know, yes, they like programs, but if it's a non-user, we know well they would be if they if they knew about them or could get to them. Or, so if we hit refresh on that page, it should <laughs> take you back to the beginning. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> Those are all good changes, so I think having the e library is great. I do think that was funny that photocopy had it before. Yeah, do we just got rid of the photocopy in my can... office because we're like, no one's using this. We have computers. You know what a photocopy will use ours because it's all constantly. Yeah, but ours is it's a printer. Just print. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we have yeah. the printers and the fixtures. I would also say the, the public, fact, the the public awareness of that the the should with convey them. all the time. Either they're like, they combine it with copy or is that not? Do we need that information? Do we need so photocopier at all? Like, are what, what are we going to do with that? I don't think so. We're not getting rid of photocopiers, so it's probably yeah. Not I think you could take it out. People know we have them. Do we need a goal in the strategic plan about photocopiers? No. That would, go that would be too, too detailed. You would need one that takes parts. <laughs> yeah. sure that, that, that might be tech, that might be technology assistance to them. So if they're like, well, come in and use your copier. Just... What about equipment? We could just say, uh, they're not going to know. It's yeah. fine. Yeah. Just, I think we have to You could say computers and printing. Or, yeah. or, or, I'm, still, I'm still hung up on story time, whether or not. Same <laughs> on that. Oh, everyone's got their own. Yeah. <laughs> that one I was like, that's a survey for another time. <laughs> Did you 
it's like a Zoom children's story time. <laughs> Let's move on. Yeah. Why do you primarily use the library and its services? But you don't use it. No, we're back on we're back to, oh, to the regular. Legal sense. So the people who said never are still looking at this if question. If you do, why do you? So to, to your point, you know, if yeah, you're not using yeah. it, you're still seeing this question. Oh, that's a good point. Maybe not. Could that, <laughs> could that be? What are we doing? What are we going to do with this information? Yeah. Could we not tell that from the other questions? Maybe. Yeah. If we're asking them if they're already giving so, us this, yeah. this yeah. Yeah. diagram of what they're using. Yeah. We don't have restrooms and water fountains and shelter. <laughs> I mean, this is true. You know, we were in the center. Cooling center last week. There were people in the library that would be just there, come here, for a place to be. You could also make it open ended that says, Why do you primarily use the library? Or would you, or do you? The problem with open ended is when you get a thousand open ended things. So I think you can choose where where you want that. I think I'm suggesting that we remove this section. Because so we've already asked them books. Books. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they're using it. And I actually have a note on here that they're just actually Yeah, yeah because if they use a study, they're going to from other places. So. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Unless it's children, I can read my notes. I deleted it. Yeah, yeah, you got rid of that one? Yeah, yeah. I hit cool. the trash can. What are your main reasons for using the library? I've already cut this one a lot. Oh my gosh. I did play with this one a lot. What can we there. cut, Latasha? Everything. Um, we can take out the copy machine. <laughs> I will say I didn't see the point in get information for home and car repair or to borrow adult books on tape. Yeah. Or, I mean, well, we could say that. It just seemed very specific. Okay. Back and again. Yeah. 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 We need this section at all. Wait, go back up to the top again. Mm. We basically went into every single category of thing that we order. Yeah. <laughs> um, the type of materials we order. And so why it's important. You need, what's well, the oh, I see what you mean. Yeah. Between the 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 I don't think I want to borrow materials. Yeah. yeah. This this yeah. is oh, one this is one of those questions that I'm going to randomly click boxes just to move on. Okay, yeah. you know, it's this is this is I, I, I'd be for taking this whole thing out, really. Yeah, I think I might agree with Tony. I think that maybe uh, Meredith uh, Dickens, the goal at one point had been like, oh, well, this might help, help us allocate resources or whatnot. Um, I think this was also all added under the same general collections, and so it was more of needing to decide which format we maybe liked more. And so, yeah, I'd be willing to in terms of between or, and that, and and what do you use? Yeah, you could fold those into five things. Yeah, yeah like to borrow materials. To we did that already, but we've already done. Like, yeah. Yeah. But we've already okay. done that. Then yeah. buy, get, get rid of it. And, and yeah. 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 Okay. So anything there that's yeah. not yeah. on the internet, folks, or not to no. use. Just kidding. Sorry. Everything's already covered. Yeah, I think the minimum programming. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, this one <laughs> to find a quiet place to work. Did we cover that? Study rooms. Study rooms. Yeah. We asked about study rooms. But about like the quiet room here, you know, like the plans for the renovation of Central include a quiet area. Susan's got a quiet room that no, you know, we that we've insisted that it was there. And does it get used? Yes. Okay. Do, is that a, do you have reservations? Not in here, you know, there's a, yeah. there's a quiet room. Yeah, we have quiet rooms, what are kind of like study rooms, we call conference rooms, basically, and then the big meeting room here. We have like well, could could rooms. using a quiet room be on your list? To yeah, add so it to that important service? One, maybe. If you want info and you don't have it. Oh, yeah, that it would be. So, yeah, any room is a quiet space. I feel like, yeah, I think it's a bit of a quiet both. place to work. Yeah, yeah. yeah, nice. Yeah, so I think if you don't have yeah, any, I still think we can get rid of all Could you say yeah. study already? Space, yeah, and also quiet room. I think it's oh. a connotation in the medical um, world, at least in the uh, as my mother used to refer to it. It was like the mental ward of the hospital, <laughs> the quiet room. <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear that? Yeah. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, like I hear it's telling their kids you need quiet time, go to your room and say that. 
Okay, so Kayla, you already deleted what are your main reasons for using the library? Yes. This section. So let's look at the next section. Right. Hey, look, that was like a whole page. <laughs> All right, this one too. So please give us your thoughts on the following library services. So, I mean, nobody knows what a circulation desk is outside of. Yeah, I think anywhere we're having to define it. Yeah, we need better. We just language. need to say what we. So, what are we asking? Please give us your thoughts on the following. Can we say JMRL's library services just in case somebody says I don't use this library? <laughs> is that a, is that a, and maybe that's nitpicky, but. And we're talking about the existing services provided. Here's where this just was, in general, I think circulation is excellent. This was Latasha's distinction between the, like, um, you yeah. know, the, the, we want data here about rating our current services. Why not just ask, how are we doing? Because there are lots of libraries that don't have a reference desk. Right. Yeah, a lot of JMRL libraries. Right. Yeah. yeah. So this, I think, what it is, this went into the section. Mm -hmm. Some of this went into the section. The next section feeds into the section where we're talking about how is the staff doing in a way. Um, Do they customer service? Well, let's see. Like, yeah, it's the same exact question right there, don't it? It's three, it's three sections. I broke it into three. Because yeah. so um, the C &E and meeting rooms are somewhat redundant. Well, not redundant. It does say what they think the quality of the meeting room. So this is talking about the quality. Yeah. So I want to know here if if 60% yeah. of our respondents say to us, we're not happy with uh, meeting rooms, mm -hmm. then that's something that our strategic plan should reflect, right? Yeah. Um, so I'm I'm okay. I, I like these these yeah. general questions. I don't like the language. That yeah, chose. please give us your thoughts, and then for fair good, I'm not sure. But first of all, starting with four and going to excellent, I feel like maybe we start with excellent. <laughs> that's just an or, or are we weighting that in our favor by doing that? This is library services, <laughs> right? How? Yeah, we don't want their thoughts. Oh, yeah. Them to please, something. please rate. Yeah, yeah. But we, we write a lot of time. We write from one to five. I know. I was going to say, I oh, feel yeah. like we make it the flip. Side. Also, the previous ones, we went from That's not right. important to important. That was a, a whim. And this is also, but I'm going to have to leave at 4 30. Thank you for coming. <laughs> 4 30 is the time at which we said we would be done here. Tony Townsend's head is already exploding. <laughs> <we're> <laughs> Yeah. I think we're we're about done here, and some of this level of nitpicking, you know, we don't need fifteen people to do probably. But well, it sounds like that's what you're talking about. Your head was already there, saying like, yeah, like we need to get out, and then, yeah. and then before yeah. everything explodes, we're leaving out a core group. These really simple ten questions to the children and research particularly. That any child. Well, and I think that's especially when we're talking about like whatever printed out version we do. But yes, having another version, like you said, that's. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And not always just for children. Exactly. Yeah. For adults yeah. that are, yeah. Do, okay. Talk, talk me through that though, Susan. So, you know, in my mind, we, the parents, the kids aren't coming to the library without the parents or the school. Right, and they're, they're the ones that are helping us facilitate that experience for the kids. I think it would be nice to know from the children, you know, when you come to the library, what do you like best? You know, do you like story time? Uh, do you like to check out books? You know, because some children don't want books. They want to play. They want to play. Do you like the toys? You know, that kind of thing. Is that going well, to affect that we say, well, we just aren't going to buy children's books anymore. We're just going to collect them. It may affect how we program. But because that's where I'm, we're not highlighting books enough that things that they like. Maybe but it, we're not doing that one on one reference with them that we should be doing. But I think this gets into where I was talking about do we need to specifically say story time or are we getting into a completely different type of survey that a programming committee actually needs to put out or the children's department needs to put out versus is that a the bigger plan? picture. Yeah. After out of our yeah. strategy, is this, of is our this a strategy or an objective type of survey versus working on the bigger picture goal? I think it would be a simple, but the children they could be like they were. 
about inclusion all the time. Yeah. We talk about equity all the time. But I don't so know if we want to get into the, the, the nitty gritty with the kids because then I feel like no, we're not. No, I think it should be able. something very simple. Okay. Yeah. I think we could do a parallel, you know, we could make a one page parallel thing that we could do at the same time. Like, I, are we going to collate that data and present it to the public as part of the strategic plan? Maybe not. Well, we could use it, you know, we could always use that. And then we could tell families like, oh, hey, we're, we're doing this survey to improve library services. Here's one for you. And here's one for your kids to fill out while you're doing this, you know. So sure, let, let, let me think about it a little bit, but I think we could use it. Answers very widely. Yes, they will very widely. Oh, they will, yeah. Okay, so now that I'm looking through the rest, that first bit there that says circulation, that whole section I think can, can go. The first part where it's CERC desk, rec desk, youth desk, we, we can add book and build somewhere else, maybe to um, under something else, but like there is a, when it comes to customer service, there is a section sure. after this that's on library staff. Like how often, what do it yeah. with, with, with your service you're getting from the staff at those desks? So I don't need further. I agree. Cut this. Mm -hmm. yeah. I agree. So cut these first Not four good. here. But should, should we, do we need to add book mobile service anywhere? Are we already getting like. We already have to do if they use it. Yeah. yeah. I get that. So that's number 13, yeah. basically. Okay. So I will delete that. Surf refuse <laughs> book mobile. <laughs> And we yeah. also change the header to rate. Yes, that's it. Yeah. If you, yeah. Please it's rate, just please rate. now. Well, re, please rate existing JMRL library services. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> We're getting there. We're getting there. There's yeah. a whole section where I'm like, yeah. And <laughs> events. Okay. And events. You know, and it could be there is a point that the Center for Nonprofit Excellence brought up, like this type of rating. Versus if you skip down to page seven, where we have, um, or section seven, there's like each one is like not important to very important. That, and that's a section I'm wondering if we even need to keep because it is kind of redundant right. or completely redundant. But I'm saying, what I'm saying yeah. is yeah. like the, the styling yeah. of having each question, like, yeah. so this is like a, a square of, Port affair, blah blah blah. You go down to, all the way to section seven. It's individualized. So all the way. Keep to, going. It's like yeah. The box, like keep yeah. going to multiple pages. Seven means nothing. Page, yeah, you're on page four. <laughs> go to page seven. Yeah. I made a note. <laughs> yeah. What I'm saying is, what, what we can do is, is it, it, you do we, this oh, it, yes. instead of this, you go down that. Oh. Important to very important. Like if we make every single one its own thing instead of that chart. I kind of liked the chart because I felt like it made it less <laughs> okay. long. And I, but that was part of the feedback was that because it was so long, you lost what the grade, you lost what the scale. Like I think my takeaway is that we had too much yeah. stuff in there. Okay, and yeah. there's a lot of repetition. Right, yeah. but yeah. even if we pare this down more, I'm just wondering what the best. All right, nine minutes left in our scheduled meeting time. I, we're not going to get through the next four pages, right? So I think we're hearing the overall mandate to focus this a little bit, to call things that are repeated in different places, to pick one format for those and go with it. So either Kayla, make them all individual or take those individual ones and put make them into a chart. Right. I would um, say not more than four pages. Three pages would be great, but like I think people are gonna not fill it out if they see it. The, the online one, you could make the sections as long as you want, you know, so you could have three sections with just this amount of oh, content. Yeah, but when you yeah. change the font, when you print <laughs> it, is when it gets a little crazy. Yeah. So I think to me, Latasha, it sounds like we need to get the subcommittee together. Paul, you can be excused because school is starting, but if you're available, uh, yeah. yeah, there's there's a, another whole section. Basically, almost after question number 26, I'm like, <laughs> do we need any of this? Because I feel like it's well, like, now I hate this library. <laughs> I was okay with it. <laughs> Never going well. It's, it's more of it's like, we kind of hit on this in other places. Yeah, there's a lot of repetition. And I'm like, yeah. And I think it was because I broke down, like, these are some main sections we want to know about. But then it was repetitive in those sections. Yeah. So I think it's. Yeah. Looking at it all together, we need to. So why don't we get together um, and take an hour or two and do this exercise that we've been doing, but finish it. Um, 
and then we could maybe just by email. And then could we, that's the question for the group, could we then share it out by email and you all have this critical of an eye and be able to actually go through the whole thing and see how it works. Yeah. Just so long as it's not eight pages. <laughs> <laughs> the line. Heard. All right. All right. Seven pages for our leader. Not eight pages. Just hit never, and I hear it gets shorter. <laughs> so then, then we can do that work, and I think we can probably do that, you know, in the next few weeks here. Uh, so that leaves us with timeline and schedules for this. Uh, when would so you know we need this whole group to look at it. I think sending it out to a few select groups, like, hey, can you answer this? And also give us feedback People on that. People always give us feedback whether we want that right. or not. <laughs> so before we even started going into this, I had written down, what if, like, so the county, Almaral County did a feedback survey and they would come set up a little table at our library yep. to try to catch people. Are we talking about doing that? Yeah, I think so we, want, we talked about some pop-ups maybe too, like finding yeah. events or places to go to, yeah. to have a computer or paper surveys to kind of. I don't know if this is way too soon because like the county fairs are all meeting. <laughs> yeah, right. I think it's That's too kind of fairs right now. Okay. Um, but I think but like, back to school nights. I know, I was thinking back that. Back to school nights. Like, is that mm -hmm. too soon? Because like. I think to, to Meredith. Um, Cole's point about having something to hand out, like a bookmark with a QR code on it and the URL, you know, like you if we could get people's bags. Yeah, here you go. With a little content? promise that you could get the it's, oh, yeah, it's in the spring, but in the fall. I have a, and, uh, like a second series. Yeah. I was also thinking like a Fridays after five. Well, we have one more Fridays after five outreach, but it's the last one of them. It's, it's in September. September. Yeah. It's the last Friday. So it would be nice if we could have something then. But, but this, this is why I want, because like we're talking about a bunch of album Mall stuff, this is where I want to reach out to the branch managers as a whole and say, what in your community within our time frame, can you look and see what's going on in your community between you and your staff and identify and places for contact. Talking. Right. Well, that's, that's what we actually question. have yeah. time the turnaround yeah. time for that. I think we can give it as much time as we think it needs. I think we're pretty good on our schedule for next year. You know, uh, we would like, I think, to have a draft by the end of this calendar year that we can share with the library board and share with our partners. And then that gives us six more months to refine that. So I think we can take, like, if we say September 1, say that's the date that we think we'll have this ready. September, October, that is the date. We want two months. Two months. Like what? Well, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm asking. Say, yeah, like when? When do we want to close the survey and be able to? to collect it's too it like it's too long. I'm just thinking about the pop-up yeah. opportunities, yeah. and that that's a lot to get in in one month versus having the two-month period. I do agree. Like for people that are just going to sit down and fill out the survey, they're going to get tired of hearing about it by the second month. But in terms of getting out to places. That's going to be really rough to do it in one month, I think. So is, is the idea then one month is a hard push for us to work with our users and then the next month become a focus? Or do we need to look at both months for the non-users or pop-ups because of the opportunities? I like that framework. You know, that we take September to put a push on in our libraries and then October, it's like, okay, what is everybody doing? Where are you going to be anyway? Book sales. Book sales. Book sales. Book sales. A lot of non-users. I mean, there's people that come to the book sale that never yeah, already pushed them on. September is uh, yeah, that's their survey, not our survey. Yeah. September is national library. Yeah. yeah. Well, so that kind of, Susan, I hear your point, like leaving it open too long doesn't really help. But if we just said, okay, it's open now, in September, we'll work on our branches, our program, and then come up with some plans for October. Bye, Alita, thank you. And if there's opportunities that we can do in September, we can allow like for not users. And as soon as it's ready, right now with our new email notification platform that tells you when your books are over through. Include on there too. Right. Right now I've got a thing that says sign up for the that's that's users. Counts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the users I can put take our survey and that can get, be in every single notice that they yeah. 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 Like we push with the food drive and stuff like that. Yes. Like yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. give me that yeah. every yeah. minute. <laughs> so we'll shoot for then meeting in the next few weeks. Yes. 
That's and then we would need to turn around for everybody here to look over. And then we need a paper version too. Yes. Yeah. I think we'll take the we'll take the questions and put them onto a Word doc. There's someone who's graphically, yeah. He's going to do that now that Evan's gone, right? Yeah. I've already got rid of one section, but just by scrunching some things together. And it's still easy. Natasha has the original version, so we'll know what you still have. Had to print it. I was going through everything, and then I realized I need to be able to flip pages. That's what I was like. You can totally get rid of it. Play with just more. Um, so we could probably even do that as a potentially as a virtual meeting, maybe. Yeah. That works for you all. Paul, how do you feel about virtual? Yeah. I can do that. Um, when does school start again? Uh, it's it's 23rd. 23rd. Okay. okay. Yeah, schools are starting very soon. Yeah. Savannah starts. Yeah, that's what we've been starting. Okay. Um, first. Oh my goodness. It's crazy. That's a big day. So then we don't have to get into the nitty gritty of our overall timeline, but basically if we collect public input in September and October, that means that we can get back together in November, kind of synthesize that. But meanwhile, there's a parallel track. We're doing a track. parallel track of kind of working. I'll start some stuff on that, send it out to everybody, and then maybe also pull together a small group to help work on that in the next okay. couple of months. You're going to get to finish it today. I'm like, I'm in it. <laughs> well, I was also hoping the the center for nonprofit excellence or whatever would would have given some. Yeah, because yeah. I was like, well, hopefully they can help us clean this yeah. up a little bit. And <laughs> they took a little while to get back to David, and then I was finally like, yeah, no. We yeah, didn't address the. It wasn't issues. a lot of qualitative. It was more. Yeah, I was like, okay, yeah, we need to do a little bit more. Yeah. Okay, so, um, do we want to set a next meeting for this group, or do we want to see how August goes? Like, is there something to meet about unless it were to be to review the survey things? But I also know there's a lot of other stuff going on. I mean, unless we're going to say, like, we're getting in a room with these goals and we're going to. I think we can do that electronically. We can do that electronically. It's hard. I mean, it, you get more done when you've got the people in the room, then it's just because it just will fall to the end of everybody's. Yeah. It's also hard to get this many people together. Hmm. Well, do you want to think I mean, is much? it possible while, we're, while a lot of us are still here to, like, workshop this any further or no? Yeah, not with the time, but no, throwing it out there. <laughs> I say, I, even I can only do it for another few minutes. Yeah, <laughs> said. Um, but I, I would say like maybe we should try it virtually, and if it's not working, okay. then bring the group back like together that. and see if we can get everyone right. to focus because. That's good. Yeah. So we'll see. You know, if we if if um. Hey, Lev, Natasha, and Paul and I run into any sort of problems, or if we send it out to everybody and we're not getting the feedback we need, then we could call it. Then we're going to call a meeting. That's a the threat. <laughs> and you're going to have to look at it. But good work, okay. you guys. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thanks so much for your work this summer on this. Good thank progress. Thank you for your patience. I appreciate it. It's a, it's a, it's Thanks a village. Something yeah. 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 It's so hard to touch on. Yeah. 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 Caleb, Caleb played with the stuff that would have made me bang my head. I figured.